Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a hyper casual game in Unity and welcome to episode 22. In this tutorial we're finally going to add that little sound effect when we collide into a cube and we're also going to deal with a difficulty setting, for example making it go faster the further we get along the path. Don't forget, click subscribe and click on the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial that I upload on video game development on my channel. There's loads to see, loads to learn, loads to do. With that in mind, let's get to work. So adding in the sound effects, we've pretty much dealt with that kind of thing anyway previously. So I'm just going to bring in uh, this little sound clip, which you can get on my website if you head over there. Downloads and Assets, uh, Hyper Casual, tutorial number 22, and you'll be able to download it there. And we're just going to add that to, um, where should we add it to? Let's add it to the camera. So player object, main camera, uh, right click, create empty. And we'll have this as crash effects. And just drag and drop that onto there. Like I say, we've dealt with this before. We know what we're doing here with sound effects. It's just a case of how do we add that into the script to make it collide? Well. Easy. Let's go to where the script is for crashing. So it's crash mech. Open that up in Visual Studio and just simply add in the variable at the top and then add in the line of code that plays it whenever we collide with a cube. Easy, right? So variable is going to be public audio source and we'll call it crash effects. And then down here, let's have this, uh, where should we have it? Let's have it there after we stop the background music. So crash effects dot play, open close bracket, semicolon, save. Let's head back into Unity. And we just need to select the objects that this is attached to. So if we go zoom in to ledge one, let's select each of the cubes here. Let's go select like that. Again, you can always do this in the hierarchy. It's entirely up to you. Once we've done that, we just need to add the sound effect there. So drag and drop onto there. And as a quick side note, just make sure you do tick, untick play on away there. And let's press play. So far, so good. Get my headphones on so I can actually hear it. There we go. Perfect. So there's our crash sound. Now, how do we deal with speed increases? How can we make this game more difficult as it goes along? So the way we're going to do this is we're going to modify the char move script. Now there is a simple way of doing this and there is not a complicated way, but a more controlled way of doing this. I'm gonna show you both. So the first way is going to be simply adding a speed amount per frame, i.e. adding in void update. So we could say move speed plus equals 0.005f because it's a float obviously and save. So obviously if you have plus one there that is going to it's going to go from zero to 60 in well a second. So best thing to do is have it a lower value if you're going to do this method. Now to show you how this works I'm actually going to make sure I am on player object here and keep an eye on this move speed here. You will see that increase when we start playing our game. So as soon as we start moving it should increase and it does. And if you also keep an eye on the game itself you should be able to see the speed increasing quite quite a lot the velocity of it is through the roof at that point it's way too fast so you could do that if you wanted to that number would be much smaller or the much more controlled method would be to add in a variable to control the speed uh, increases so we would say public uh, let's have this as a float and we'll have this as time delay semicolon and next one is going to be public float and we'll say increase speed now 
Before we carry on, I'm actually going to make both of these um, an actual value here. And obviously you can change these at any given point in your um, inspector panel over here. I guess, well, I guess you can either set them here like we have done here. So we said move speed is three. We could say time delay equals one. So every second we would add uh, more to our speed or you could set it in void start. Again, it, it's entirely up to you how you want to do these things because with uh, programming, there's always tons of different ways that you can do things. So uh, let's do it this way for starters. So time delay equals one and increase speed equals let's say let's increase it by 0, 0.0 let's do that 0 0.05 again oh, i've got the f because it's a float so how we're going to do this is via a coroutine we're going to need to add in another variable uh, in a little bit a bool that's going to be so we can check whether we're adding time or not so we can do um i enumerator and we'll just call it increase the speed, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And what we'll do is yield, return new, wait for seconds. And in brackets, rather than put a number, let's put time delay, semicolon. So we're now going to wait for however long we have determined here. So if we put that as 10, we would wait for 10 seconds. If we put it as one, wait for one second after that what we'll do is we will say move speed plus equals increase speed semicolon so what that will do is it will add the value of increase speed to move speed that's why all three of these well technically move speed and increase speed only need to be floats because we are dealing with decimals you don't necessarily have to deal with decimals when it comes to time delay but you may as well have it as a float. So the next thing we need to do is we need to come up with an if statement to say, are we adding time? If we are, don't do anything. If we're not, let's add. So let's have another variable here, public bool, and we'll have this as adding speed. So by default, that's going to be false. So in void update, what we're going to say after this transform.translate line, we're going to say if adding speed equals, that's double equals as always, false, then do the following. First things first, we need to say adding speed is equal to true. So we don't trigger this if statement over and over. At that point, we need to say start coroutine and in brackets, increase the speed, open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. Final thing to do at that point is to say, adding speed equals false, semicolon, and save. So I know this is a very convoluted way of what we just achieved. However, this one is much more controllable. So we can control how often we change the speed and what we change the speed by, rather than just changing it every single frame. Again, it's entirely up to you what method you want to do. If you want to go the easy way of just having that one extra line of void update, no problem. It's still going to work the same way in some respect. Like I say, this one is much more controlled. So if we press play now with my player object set here, if we look at char move, we should see these change as necessary. So this one's going to be the one that changes the most. These two have been set in the start method. So let's press play and see how this behaves. <clears throat> so there's our last score, 140. So now if you watch this, you should see this three increase much slower. Every second it will increase. So you can see it's not having much of an impact at this point. So far, so good. So to show you how this works in a much uh, better environment, let's actually change that to increase speed as 0 0.5. So every second, it's going to add 0.5 to our speed. So that is going to speed up 
probably about the same as what it would have if we'd have just had the um, line of code in the update method. So this is going to increase quite rapidly, I think. Yeah, you can see just how quick this is going. Quite fast now. Um, oof, we just clipped that there. Unlucky. So we should hopefully see the speed reset now. It should be slow again. And it is. So best thing I can recommend at this point is you work with these settings and play around with the speed and time delay as necessary. So let's keep it as 0 0.05 every second. Um, I'm not very good at this, to be honest. I made this and not very good because it works better on uh, mobile devices. So that's pretty much, I'm happy with how this has turned out now. Um, we do have a fully functioning game. It's pretty decent. And it's uh, a build size shouldn't be too big at all. Uh, it would have helped if I'd have clicked on the player, but hopefully we can see just how much it is. So you can see it's speeding up slightly. So it's starting to speed up. Score's working perfectly as well. Every time we pass some of these blocks, we are increasing the score. Let's see how far we can get. Yeah, it's definitely becoming a bit faster here. Ooh, I've had enough now. 430. So, best thing for you guys to do now is Take this a little bit further if you want to. Uh, all the mechanics are there for what you're going to need. You take it as far as you need to. The, everything you've learned in this series can be applied in various different ways. And if you need to know any more, I have tons of different tutorials on my channel that you can apply the same logic to this game here or the previous game that we've created. Um, so we've created two hyper casual games so far and I'm quite happy with both of them because they are both very different and obviously there's tons of different hyper casual games. You could even use mechanics from both of them and create a completely different type. So I'll leave that entirely with you. So until the next video guys, thank you very much for watching.